In today's video, we're going to review and test two 10 gigabit cards from LR Link. LR Link makes a large variety of network cards, and I had the opportunity to put two of them through their paces. If you want to find out more about these cards and how they perform, be sure and stick around for the rest of this video. If you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe and select notifications. And of course, if you find this video useful, please give it a like as it helps support the channel. Full disclosure before we get started is that LR Link did reach out to me and send me these cards for review, but they haven't paid for me to review these cards, nor have they influenced this video in any way. As always, the opinions in the test results are my own, and they'll get to see this video for the first time just as you're seeing it. If you've priced 10 gigabit equipment, you know that it can be a bit pricey. So when I had the opportunity to test these cards in this price range, I was extremely interested to see how they would perform and stack up against other 10 gigabit cards that I've been using. Let's quickly look over the specs of these cards and talk about some of the differences between the two. Both of these cards are a x4 PCI Express that support 10 gigabit connectivity and come with full and low profile brackets. Both the cards support all the major operating systems and have full VLAN support. The LRES 1016PF uses the Intel 8259 chipset, which is a PCI 2.0 card that supports 10 gigabit. It has a single SFP Plus port and retails for less than $100. Being an SFP Plus card, you will need to add a fiber or a copper transceiver to connect to the switch, depending on the type of switch that you have. For testing, I'm going to be using the multi-mode fiber. The LRE 9811 uses the Intel X550 chipset, which is a PCI 3.0 card and has a single RJ45 port, allowing you to use CAT6 or CAT6A to connect to your switch. Looking at both of these, first thing that grabs you is the massive heatsink. All 10 gigabit cards have heatsinks, but some are far more substantial than others. Having used many different 10 gigabit products, I know they can run pretty hot, so having a good heatsink is extremely important. Now that we've seen the cards, let's do some testing to see how they perform. I'll use a standard file copy with 155 gigs of data to measure throughput as a comparison between my current setup and the two LR link cards to see if there's any significant difference in throughput. This is not meant to be a comprehensive test under a variety of conditions, but rather to test the throughput against my current baseline. This test network has been set up with a default configuration, meaning there's no jumbo frames or optimization of any kind. The server that we're reading data from is set up from a ZFS pool containing two VDAVs made up of six SSDs configured for performance to avoid any major bottlenecking. The receiving system is a Core i9-9900K that will be writing the test data to a Samsung 970 Plus SSD. As you can see from the testing, the performance of the SFP Plus card is virtually identical to my current high-end card, with their RJ45 version being only marginally slower. Given the SFP Plus card is only a PCI 2.0 card with an MSRP of less than 100 bucks, it performs on par with a much more expensive card. All in all, I was really impressed with both these cards. My impression of the quality of the build was very good and the performance was equivalent to anything that I have. For my application, I ended up using the SFP Plus card for my digital editing server as my switch can take either an SFP Plus or an RJ45. I want to really thank the team at LR Link for sending me these cards and allowing me to put them through their paces. That's about it for today's video, and remember to give it a like if you found it useful. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.